Let me go ahead and get started. Um, this is an introduction to jQuery um, and how we use it in WordPress. My name is Jim Duran. Um, that's my Twitter handle. I work at Johns Hopkins University as a web designer, and I teach um, adjunct web design classes at the community college in Baltimore County. <laughs> at Hopkins, we use um, WordPress to run the Gazette. Um, this was just rec recently um, reworked inside of WordPress. Some other universities do that. I didn't do this when my colleagues did. I use it for faculty blogs, um, patient education sites. I also use it as a content management system. Um, and we use BBPress for message boards. <clears throat> I like jQuery because it feels like making, it makes JavaScript so easy it's like cheating, really. Um, it simplifies everything. And it's, it's so efficient um, that it's, it's almost better than writing your own code. Um, so what is jQuery? It's, it's a lightweight library. It is JavaScript. Um, and it's used for primarily um, DOM traversing, um, event handling, animations, AJAX calls, things like that. So this library, all these things are already written. All you have to know is how to call them. You can get jQuery from jQuery.com, it's a free download. Um, there's two versions available. There's a production version, which is minified, it's tiny. Um, and then there's a development version. So if you're, um, as you're, as you're working on a theme or making something, you probably want to use the development <coughs> version because you can step through it and fire a button. It has comments um, and it's easy to figure out what's going on if you need to. Um, Dell, Google, Major League Baseball, dig a lot of major sites use jQuery now. It's, it's widely used on the web, and um, Microsoft uh, now supports it intrinsically in Visual Studio, um, which is interesting. So when you use the minified version, it's about 24 KB. It's a really small download. So when you include it, um, you know, it, it downloads to the user's client. It's already there. It's tiny. This is what it looks like when it's minified. Um, it's abstracted into this. This is why it's hard to read. You want to use the uh, development version when you're writing yeah. code. Um, intrinsically, it supports cascading style sheet selectors, versions one through three. So you can use all of those things if you want to. Wide browser support. Now, this is one of the reasons I really like it. Um, it supports Internet Explorer 6. Does anybody care about IE6 anymore? Yeah, yeah but so those of you that do, you probably have to, right? Um, I do at work because we have an application called SAP that works on IE6, and so we can't upgrade a lot of the computers. So it's important to me. I want my work to be the same as, as much as possible, as good as it can be in all the browsers. jQuery helps me with that, um, and it handles a lot of the, the browser quirks. And I'll talk a little bit more about that. Here's another great thing. Like WordPress, there's a huge community developing plugins and um, supporting jQuery. Um, they, they were in Google groups before, and there were, I think, uh, 20, 22,000 members or something like that. It was the second largest group only to Android developers. Now, they've moved away from there, but that shows the kind of community, just like WordPress, um, that's available for this. And, and then again, these are the kinds of things that we can do with it using these plugins. So it was actually, um, it, it was founded by John Resick, who's from Boston. And it was released at a bar camp on uh, January 14th, 2006. So we just had a birthday, the four-year birthday of jQuery. Um, and there's a team of about 20 people currently working on it. So here, here's an example. Um, I made this site before I had jQuery. And this was um, complicated because I, I had to have a landing page for each of the, the parent categories, and then uh, I, I wanted to have a subsection underneath of that. So I needed to be able to tell if I was on the landing page or not, and then um, control what was showing here in the sidebar, depending on what the user clicked. So this, uh, again, I made it before jQuery. I looked around. I couldn't find an example of a site like that with code that I could steal. So I had to write it myself. And in JavaScript, um, when I did it, it ended up being about 278 lines of code. It took me weeks to get it to work right. There was still a bug in it. Never quite, it was quite, quite right. So when jQuery came out and I, I redid it, I was able to do it in 17 lines of code, which is just phenomenal. And this took me an hour once, once I figured out how to, how to use jQuery. 
and the bug went away. And I'll talk about it. I figured out what the bug was. So, um, I, This is my classroom at, at the community college. Um, and I show this slide because when I teach JavaScript um, in that module, I do a section on jQuery. And I send my students to the site as an exercise. And I ask them to make something. And typically, they can build something within 15 minutes from the documentation. And that's the key. The documentation is so good on the site that it really is um, easy to get going. So also with that, once you have a grip on, on this, on using web standards, on doing good semantic HTML, and understanding how CSS works with classes and IDs and, and selectors, the behavior part is very intuitive um, with jQuery. So it, it's kind of designed in a way, from almost like a designer's perspective. I think that's why one of the reasons it's so popular. I like this, this diagram because DOM connects everything. And once you sort of have a grip on that, on the IDs and selectors and elements, then it's really easy to implement um, jQuery. And it's all about manipulating the document object model. So here's an example. First thing to do is include the JavaScript library. Um, once we do that, we have this thing called document.ready. Now, this is the thing that solved my bug. This is like onload, the onload event in JavaScript, except that the images don't have to download. Once the DOM is in place, you can act upon it with your jQuery. So it saves time. Otherwise, you have to wait for all the images to download. That's what was causing my, my issue with my navigation before. Um, what this is doing, I, I'm sorry, this is kind of hard to, to read the red. I'm calling um, any time an anchor tag is clicked, an A, we're going to throw up a, a pop-up window. So jQuery is actually checking the page. It returns a collection, an array of all the anchor tags, and then it's going to do whatever I ask it to do here. The other thing I wanted to point out is we, instead of return false, we can actually prevent default behaviors on events um, using jQuery with, with this method. So I have a link here. When they click WordPress, they're going to get an alert that says, thanks for visiting, and nothing else is going to happen. Um, this would return a collection of all the paragraphs on a page, or it would return the entire document as an object that I can, I can, I don't have to loop through it. It's available and I can act upon it. By default, jQuery uses the dollar sign as, a, um, as the, the handle to get to it. But other libraries like Prototype do that as well. So you can use jQuery with Prototype because there's a jQuery namespace, which is this. Instead of the dollar sign, initially we say jQuery dot no conflict, and that alerts jQuery that okay, we're not going to use the, we're not going to um, act upon the dollar sign if it appears. We're just going to uh, ignore that. Prototype uses the dollar sign, so you could use both together. Make sense? So that that's great. It plays well with others. So here's an example. Um, this, this is on our, our site. I have a background image of the pop-out um, icon. And just for the sake of this discussion, pretend that these links have to open in a new window. They don't really. But I needed something to do with this. So this um, exemplifies what I'm talking about. I have HTML. I apply a class to that, <laughs> external. right? So I have a class of external on my link. In my CSS, I put the background image on um, the link itself. And then because I have a class on that element, I can access it through jQuery. Any link, any anchor tag that has a class of external open in a new window. So it's really simple. This is the beauty of the design of this, I think, is that if you have a grip on the first two things, it becomes very easy to write this code. Um, there's a site, jQuery UI, and they have uh, widgets pre-built. Um, things like sliders and date pickers, progress bars, stuff that we do all the time, tabs. Um, and they're themable. So while you're here, you can actually say, well, you know, I've got a layout that looks a certain way. You can sort of style it, and maybe it's kind of close to what you're already using. And then you can build a download, and you can actually pick the behaviors that you want to include with that. Mood Tools does that. Some other libraries do. Um, and so it totally speeds up development time. And again, there's, there's great documentation for that, too. There's a new version of this coming out, I think, this week. Uh, 1.8 should be out. So again, the documentation is where it's at. 
Um, there's a great API reference for jQuery, and this is how it's organized, and then also for the um, user interface reference. And that kind of gives you an idea of the kinds of things that you can do. So I wanted to talk a little bit more about selectors and demonstrate how to use this. This is going to return an array of HTML elements. So whatever I, I can just specify an element in here, like a div tag. And then I can act on it. So I'm going to add CSS border, 9 pixels, solid red, to any div that's on my page. I get an array back, and then I apply CSS to it. Likewise, I can act upon just IDs if I want to. So if I have something with an ID of my div, I can actually insert something. I can append something to that div. So this is going to put a paragraph, Word Camp Boston, at the bottom of that div for me. Classes, I can act upon classes if I want to. Um, this is an animation effect, so if something were to be clicked or there was an event that fired, it's going to find my class, anything that has that, and it's going to slide it down slowly. It's really easy. I can act upon classes inside of classes. Here I'm actually doing, it's the equivalent of display none in CSS, but I'm hiding something. I'll slide up. Um, chaining is a, is a concept with jQuery. Um, and also, I wanted to talk about contextual selectors. So if I have paragraphs inside of a div, I can actually target those. And in this case, I'm applying a CSS border to any paragraph that's in a div. Here's sort of a WordPress type thing. If I have a post, I can actually target specifically um, a direct descendant. I can hit an image in there, or an ID, or anything that I wanted to, and I could do something to that. So this should start to kind of see how it's useful. If I wanted to animate something, a particular image, if I put an ID on it, then I could. I could have it slide down or, or whatever. Um, we, we can target specific things. So here, if I had a table, a TR, and I wanted the first row to be italicized, this is how I would do that. So I'm, I'm getting the first element in the collection, the first TR, and then I'm applying the style of italics. All right, so chaining, um, we can actually apply do multiple things to an element, any of these things, if we, if, if we want to in a single line. So here, something is clicked, say, and using the this keyword in JavaScript, I'm grabbing that thing, and I'm checking to see if it's not in the, the thing that has an ID of nav with, it's a list element with a class of on, and if that's true, I'm removing the class of over. Right, so think about JavaScript, how many lines of code you'd have to write to do that, just to check that stuff. And here I'm just getting it in one shot. Yes? So even though this syntax is similar to CSS selectors that aren't accepted by IE6, it's completely different. <sighs> Say that again? So the question was, <laughs> even though it's like... Uh, well, those look like the CSS selectors that IE6 would ignore, the, the descender, the child selectors, and things yes. like that. Yes, okay, so the question is, will it work in IE6? Yes, it will, it actually, so that's, that's great. Somebody actually said, what if we took away support for IE6 in, in the jQuery library? Would it run faster? Would it be any better? And they said, no, it's actually just designed from the ground up, so there was no benefit to doing that. Good question. All right, so what's thing? This has been kind of a crazy week. I've been trying to write this talk, and actually this week we're in the 14 days of jQuery. They launched the new library, 1.4, on January 14th, and it's got all this new stuff in it. And I was like, oh, this is great for my talk, but I'm trying to test the stuff and learn it at the same time as writing this. You should go to this website if you're interested in jQuery, if you haven't already, if you haven't already seen this. Um, they're doing videos, lots and lots of information about it. They relaunched the jQuery website with new documentation. And by the way, there's documentation for each version back. So if you're using 1.3.2, you can find the information that you need for that. So what's new, um, it's much faster. And I pilfered these slides from that site, actually from Flickr. But this is a little bit confusing. These represent the different browsers. And these are in milliseconds. These slides uh, profile the most commonly used methods in jQuery, the ones that get hit all the time based on the most popular websites that get the most traffic that actually use jQuery. So there's a big performance improvement in 1.4. They, they rework the whole core for this version. Same here. Um, HTML, th this is a really heavy one. This is sort of like inner HTML and JavaScript. It is that, in fact. But it does other things to the content that you put in there. And it was very intensive. Um, and you can see that they've considerably sped this up. 
So here's, uh, I'm not going to talk about everything that's new. Here's some new methods. Next until, previous until, parents until. If I have an unordered list with these cities here, I can actually find, so I'm, I have an unordered list, find the list item that contains Baltimore, and then do next until, until it contains Seattle. And what it's going to return is Boston, Chicago, and DC. So I can actually target individual elements. I can get them, I can change the content, I can do stuff to them, apply styles, anything. Has, I can actually find out if a container actually has something and do something to that. This was new, um, binding multiple event handlers to a, a single event. Um, binding is when we attach an event to the document. So in this case, um, when something happens to my ID of nav, here I have a click function, I can do something if it's clicked. If somebody mouses over it, I can do something. And if somebody mouses out, I can do something to that. I can do it all with a single bind event. Um, there's some compatibility changes. Um, add no longer concatenates results together. Um, they're merged and then sorted. I haven't tested this, so I'm not exactly sure what that would return. The jQuery site has all of these things articulated, but the interesting thing is, is they also provided a plugin. So if you want those performance enhancements, you know, the HTML and the things that make it so much faster, you can include this plugin, and your old things will still work the way they did. So that's kind of a nice, nice thing, instead of just forcing you to upgrade. So plugins, we should all be familiar with plugins. Um, it's just like WordPress. If you're going to do something with jQuery, chances are somebody's already had a similar idea and made something that you could probably use. So it's worth looking at their plugins repository, and there's just thousands of them, just like with WordPress. So here's one that I use. This is a, one of my sites that's in a, it's a CMS. I'm using WordPress. It's not really a blog for one of our labs. And they wanted to have this rotating image thing to show employees you know, on the, on the home page. So um, I found a plugin to do it. It's a really small one. It's the cycle plugin for KB. Um, and to get this to work, I just include it on the page. And then this says um, ID slideshow. And the method is cycle. That's all I have to do. I have a div up here with the ID of slideshow, and it will automatically cycle those images for me. I have some CSS going on too, but wow, right? Like to write that myself would have taken some work. It's like cheating. It's just like cheating. <laughs> <laughs> Another um, bug fix for Internet Explorer is PNG transparency that doesn't support the alpha channel. So if, if you need to have transparent PNGs, there's multiple libraries that you can include um, plugins. A couple are listed here. And so th this logo up here is a transparent PNG and sitting on top of this. I can use this all over the place now, and it works. I don't have to worry about it. Here's a blog. I'm actually working, I was working on this this week, and um, this is for a writer friend of mine. She really wanted to have this typewriter on the, the landing page. And I wanted to have other content there, text, that would get indexed by the search engines. So I didn't just want to have the typewriter. So what I decided to do was make a... Um, I made a, a template page in um, WordPress that shows any post with a category of about. And it lists them. So we have three. We've got home, about, and books. When the user clicks books, you guys have seen this, where it slides up automatically. It kind of scrolls. I used a scrolling plugin to do this. Um, super easy. If once the document loads, um, once the anchor tag is clicked inside the main nav that WordPress provides for me, um, it's going to scroll to the attribute of the href. And in that case, I'm having an ID on that post. So I'm going to scroll to that. It works great. Back to this thing. Um, curved corners. I want to have semantic HTML on the site. I didn't want to have, I've done every possible way to get curved corners with multiple span tags or nested divs or what, whatever, um, background images. So this one, I, I tried a, uh, a plugin, which actually, when the page loads, it's called Corners. This one's not minified. You can get a minified version. It will apply corners to anything that you tell it to apply corners to, and it works really well so far. This site gets a lot of traffic at work, and I haven't had any issues with it at all. The, um, the library's corners, I can pass parameters into there, and then I, all I have to do is apply the class, like I decide what I'm going to call it, I apply that to, um, you know, if, if, it's, if it's this thing and I just want the bottoms, I put a class on that, and then I specify how I want it to, uh, to show. So I want it a 10-pixel border at the bottom. 
works great. All right, so AJAX. Asynchronous JavaScript and XML gives the impression of speed. We can do calls to other pages um, and, and get information. We can load feeds and things like that. So this is what a typical JavaScript um, AJAX call would look like. I have to test to see if it's Internet Explorer, and if so, I have to get the ActiveX object. Otherwise, I have to do this stuff, do the ready state, blah, 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 and then it loads. With jQuery, it's really simple to load stuff into your DOM. And this will load content. This is doing the exact same thing the other thing did from a text file into a div on my page. Um, this is the AJAX, AJAX method. I can specify all of these parameters if I want to do a post or a get. If I, I specify the URL, if I need to pass parameters into there, and then I can have success and failure messages um, and, and act accordingly if it doesn't work. JSON JavaScript ob object notation. If if you um, instead of using XML like in the AJAX thing, we can use JSON. This is JavaScript. This is a new thing in 1.4. If anybody uses JSON, it's now strict, and you have to use double quotes. Previously, you could use single quotes, and which is valid JavaScript, but it's not valid JSON. So now you have to add the double quotes. So here's an example. This is the thing I just showed you. Um, um, the data type is going to be JSON. I'm specifying that. jQuery understands this intrinsically. It knows, um, it kn it knows what to do with it. So when I, I, I do the call, if it works, on success, I actually insert the values into a div on my page. Um, here's in the success function, I've got three classes, date, name, and medical record number. This is an actual example that I'm using. Using the HTML method that I talked about earlier, I'm inserting the data and I'm specifying which node in that JSON and telling it where to go. Here's the HTML for it. I have classes, medical record number, name, and date. And then this is what the page looks like. And all this stuff is being loaded that way, but it's loading those things for me. All right, so here's a, another quick common thing. Um, if you want to load feeds in, you know, you have an animated GIF status bar that's loading. Once it comes in, you replace that with um, the contents of your, your feed. Here, um, I have a PHP page that can actually pull other sites. So I don't get any cross-site cross scripting risks. And then I'm inserting it into uh, the page. Again, it's just super simple to do this. It's a get. All right, WordPress. I should talk about WordPress a little bit. <laughs> so um, this was from uh, about six weeks ago, I guess. I went and I, I downloaded all of the popular themes, the most popular themes, 20 of them, I guess. And I looked at every single one, and I wanted to see who was using, J who was using JavaScript, period, and who was using jQuery. Um, the ones with the green checks actually are. So that was interesting. I did the same thing with plugins, and I looked at which plugins were already using jQuery. There's, I, I say that to say this, there's multiple ways to get JavaScript or jQuery into your, your theme. This is probably the best method, and I, I read about this quite a bit. I was trying to figure out um, if this truly was the best method, and I, I believe that it is. This, this function, WP and QScript, will load, jQuery already comes with WordPress, the back end uses it. This will load that instance of it, and if you keep your WordPress up to date, you always have the latest version of jQuery from when that release came out. So now we're up to 1.4, I don't think the new one has it yet, maybe it does. This will instantiate that version, and then you can use it, so they don't have to download it again. That's pretty cool. The thing I was concerned about what, with this was, um, if I'm making a theme for myself, I may want, I don't know, I may want the older version. I may have methods that don't work in the new one, possibly. So I could do this other way, where I include my own version of jQuery. The thing about this is, is it prevents collisions. And I actually did a test. I wrote a plugin, a theme, and I tried to instantiate multiple versions of jQuery using the, the first method, and it was smart. It only did it once. So it's probably the best way to do it. You can also link directly to um, jQuery is hosted on Google. Uh, the latest version is always there, and you can link to it. I personally don't like that because I take the train to work, and I work on my laptop a lot, and I, I can't get online there. So I don't know what your thoughts are. But 
only two of the themes that I one sec, only two of the themes that I looked at used this method of the most popular themes, and I thought that was curious. So I'm still kind of mulling this over to see what's best. Your question. How would you um, specify the version in that first option? You can't. It's the latest version. And that's why I was saying that the question was, how do you specify the version using the first option in Q? Um, and, and you can't really do that. You get what comes with WordPress. What happens if you, I, I've used a theme roller. I used some of the UI elements. Mm -hmm. And I was getting some errors because something else on the page was using another, one of the other plugins was using a different version of jQuery. So, so the question was, she's using the theme roller, the UI version of jQuery. She has a plugin that was actually conflicting. This is the problem, conflicting with um, jQuery. Some of the plugins do this. This is a big no-no if you write plugins. You need to do this method and use the latest version. And if you're writing plugins for themes and releasing them, you want to keep your code up to date anyway. So you really want to do it the right way. So um, to get around that, um, <laughs> it depends, you know, that's the problem. You have to look at your plugins and see what's what's going on. Can you just edit the plugin? You, uh, with that if you line want. In it and change the line? If you want to. Yeah, and you could add this to yeah. that if you know what you're doing. Sure. Um, okay, so WordPress actually ships with all this stuff already. This is just jQuery. WordPress ships with stuff from, I guess, MooTools, a prototype. There's a bunch of things available if you use other JavaScript libraries. But these are the ones. Um, as of yesterday, that come with WordPress. There's also, you notice there's dev versions. Those are the unminified ones. So if you're testing something, you, you can, you can um, instantiate this version and then you know, use Firebug to step through your code and figure out what's actually going on there. So there's a lot of stuff, and the UI is already in there, right? So you, you can use that. OK, um, real quick, the forums were just relaunched on this thing called Zoho. Um, as part of the 14 days of jQuery. I liked Google Groups because I could get email digests of all the activity there and search through my Gmail to find things. You, you, this doesn't have any digest yet. And I'm not sure I like this so much, but it's what we got. They like it because it's easier to administer. So we'll have to check that out and keep an eye on it. This site just launched. It has news about all of their products that they maintain and a history um, of and the entire jQuery story is up here. So this is also brand new and worth watching. It's um, jQuery.org. jQuery.org. Um, finally, these are some links. You should follow jQuery on Twitter if you don't already, because they constantly post cool. And find the developers. There's a list that they follow. And follow those people, because they post the coolest plugins all the time. That's like an invaluable resource for me. And I, I keep finding mind-blowing stuff that, you know, I didn't know you could do that. Like, it's really, really cool. These are some books that I, I liked. Um, this one's outdated already. But the pact seems to be on top of things. Thank you. My slides will be on my blog um, by the end of today. I wanted to get through this before I posted them. Any questions? The biggest problem I have, uh, and I mess around with jQuery a little bit, is uh, about me and figuring out what's going on. So the question is, debugging jQuery, um, do you use the, the development version? Uh, no. Try that, yeah. right? Because then you'll see actually what's going on in the code. Okay. Um, and then it's, it's often some um, syntax thing. I do stupid stuff. And there's a thing called JS Lint, too, that will actually validate. It'll tell you if you have a syntax error. That It's a plugin. So you can put that on your development site. And it'll, it'll alert you that, hey, this isn't valid jQuery. So that's another resource. No. So when, when you, the question is, is can you have the CSS, when you add it using jQuery, will it show up in the head of the document? And the answer is no. It's in the browser's memory. It's in the, the document object after the page loads, which um, won't. I did, I did that one time, and then the page validate this valid Do you have accessibility concerns <coughs> and things like that? No. Um, I don't know what was happening that would cause it to not validate. I can talk. Oh, interesting. Well, you don't want to. All right, I'll talk to you. Okay. Any, any other questions? <laughs> yes. Not really a question, but do you know how you have the uh, on-queue script? Yes. 
So you can use that to load in other jQueries. Like you can, you can set up so if it's not the admin, you can say unload that one and then load one from Google or wherever. Right. So. So you, you can use the on Q script to load actually other versions of jQuery if you want to. I think that keeps it in like, the, so it doesn't have collisions and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yep. I just want to mention Firebug is a good. Yeah, Firebug, absolutely. I don't know if people know about that. Um, a plugin for Firefox, if you don't use Firebug, it will actually let you debug JavaScript real time, inject things into the DOM. It's an invaluable resource. I think that's time. So thank you. Thank you.